Hi everybody! Hi Rutger! How are you doing? I'm alright man. Welcome yeah. to another Game of Thrones Season 8 video. Today we have a science guy. We want to learn some science out of the story and found out, find out what checks out scientifically and what can we learn from all this science. Ooh. Wow. So today we're going to talk about the seasons. Let's talk about the seasons. Winter is here. They have seasons that sometimes, sometimes last, last years, a few years, months, sometimes a few months, sometimes, sometimes seven, years. seven years. It's really, it's really weird. That's weird. Yeah, like here, it's just like clockwork almost. Why is it like clockwork here? What makes it tick? So the Earth goes around the Sun, um, but it has a little bit like the axis of the Earth is a little tilted. Right. So depending if you go around the Sun, and of course the Earth also rotates right. around its own axis, Part of the year, you, you are, are farther. Of, yeah, because we're tilted, and because the moon keeps that tilt in place, we have seasons like the northern hemisphere is is gets more direct sunlight half of the year, and then the southern hemisphere the other half. So that's okay. that's what makes it work, and that is totally regular. Right. Yeah. So how could a world that looks so much like ours, based on real historical events? has the same kinds of populations and plants and stuff. How can it have an irregular set of seasons? How is that possible? Well, so scientifically, there's a bunch of different ways in which you could explore it. So for example, maybe planetos, mm -hmm. the, the axial tilt is not being locked in place quite so much. Or so maybe solar activity is different, like the way the axial tilt wobbles a little bit and sort of the, the way the Earth goes around. The combination of those is called the Milankovitch cycles, okay. which happen at a longer time span and which are thought to be related to ice ages, for example. So it's not regular uh, regular seasons, but it's regular ice ages. Like they know that after autumn, there comes winter. I don't know, like a series of small ice ages. So first of all, the wildlife actually on planetos is more like Pleistocene ice age than modern times. That's, there's right. mammoths, mm. there's these big bears, right. dire wolves. So there's more of these ice age kind of mm. macrofauna. And like the lions are more solitary, so that seems more like cave lions. Right, in so. the, the Thraki lands, whatever. And also like the reports of the lions in Westeros, mm. so it's not really that they're in packs, but they're like solitary lions. Okay, and so how would the world with semi-regular ice ages, how would that look? Would that look like our world? Well, it's, that's, it, it's an enormous pain to live in a world like that. It's very unpredictable. And they'll both be dead come winter. So all of the calendar that we live by, with the harvests, and okay, this is the time when we sow the seeds, right. this is when we harvest, that all falls apart. And it's right. actually an enormous challenge for the people living through that. Clear is for the winter, when the snows fall a hundred feet deep, when the sun hides for years and children are born and live and die, all in darkness. Kings froze to death in their castles, same as the shepherds in their huts. And women smothered their babies rather than see them starve. So how would you adapt? What would the culture be like? What would the nature be like? Well, nature would have to sort of go dormant for a much longer time. So a lot of things would have to, right. I guess, die off and regenerate in the next spring, which could be years away or they could be in some sort of hibernation mode. Plants would be different, right? Because now sort of the seeds and so on are usually just packed with enough nutrients, okay, to just get through this winter. Yeah. But if the winter takes eight years, right. that's going to be a totally different ball game. Right. right. If, if the plant wants the animal to eat it and then shit off his seeds somewhere else, it has to have stronger seeds. For example. For, example. for the animal to survive the long winter. 
Yeah, but also that the seeds just have to survive for longer. So the one plant, the one animal that would adapt better would have better chances to survive and then like so the entire entire nature would be different. Right? Nature would be totally different. Agriculture would be different. Probably just the challenge of trying to live through these times would yeah. make it so that civilization also can't advance. Yes. And you can't have feudalism without agriculture, without this kind of agriculture. How can no. that happen? Yeah. Who would make the food and who would be tied to the, to maybe, the land? But maybe it's also Westeros has been stuck in the Middle Ages for thousands of years. Uh, Is it because they get knocked back all the time ooh, by these harsh winters? Right, yeah. right. And they have to accumulate so much grain and food because they have to prepare for the long winter. So less surplus. Yeah. Also, right, which yeah. is surplus is also a good, always a good thing for a civilization to develop. That somebody needs to have still be able to eat a sandwich <laughs> and invent steam engines at the same time, right? So, so different, so different types, types of, of vegetation, vegetation on large, large stretch, stretches, stretches of land, land affect, affect climate. climate. So, for, so example, for example, forest, forest uh, absorbs more heat, right. retains more heat than grasslands. Yeah. Right, so there's this whole idea of like a Pleistocene park yeah, where you yeah. would have grass. Watch our Jurassic Park video. Other video. So how does that then work on Planetos? Yes. Because it has to do with albedo, right? Albedo yes. is like the way the Earth reflects sunlight right. again. And if it reflects more, it cools down. If it's darker, it retains heat more, it warms right. up. But if you have seven years of summer and sun, isn't the albedo of planetos also affected by the ghost grass, for example, which is white as snow mm. and spreading? Wouldn't that affect the climate? So you think that maybe is causing the winter to come? It, it, it might be. Okay, so, right. there, so, so, so the White Walkers, they were like getting whatever news information that the grass is getting whiter on the other side of the fence. But Longer running Long climate, climate change, change on, Earth on Earth also has to do, with, has to do things, with things, not just with not the, just sun the sun and the location of the planet, planet but also with things, with things happening, happening on, on Earth. Earth. So. so at various times in Earth's history, temperatures dropped for a variety of reasons, including what life was doing at the time. If the, if the natural world is, is, is different with different animals and you have different habits and different, different kind of cultures, for example, in this right. habitat you have these kinds of cultures, in this habitat you have these kinds of cultures. Right, yeah. The evolution of human civilizations mm -hmm. and of culture is very much shaped by climate and by geography, right. by the kinds of crops that you can grow. Surviving. You know, yeah, like if you, are, if you find yourself in a land that uh, can only grow grass, well, then I guess you have to really like animals that eat grass because you're not going to do it. So I maybe, you know, have an alliance with horses or with cattle. So, so the local ecology and climate really shapes the kind right. of culture that you can evolve and the population densities that you can accomplish. Right. And all of that, like it it's really determines the fate of different societies. Okay, okay, so let's use all that and try to have a bold prediction for this video, for the show, right. regarding the seasons and the science of it, I don't know. So the, the theories that we have been uh, pushing out talk about the end of magic by the end of the show in order to have stability, political stability, but also seasonal stability yes maybe that's a metaphor for the political situation when the seasons become regular no more magic no more winter is coming it's, it is coming but it's just three months long sometimes four months so my prediction is that by the end of the show the seasons will be regular we'll get that mm. in the voice over by the end sam may be reading out Balance. what is happening later thank you Woodhead. thank you everybody for watching check out our patreon page to support this channel all year long not just for the seasons a lot of extra content coming up 
And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. On the long winter's wait from the window I watched My friends, they couldn't have been kind I don't know if you've heard about the book The Thrones Effect, how Game of Thrones conquered pop culture. This is a vast collaboration with several other YouTubers to look at the Game of Thrones phenomenon from all kinds of different angles to get a better sense of how it has become this cultural titan and how it has impacted our culture. We take a look from a political point of view, a historical point of view, psychoanalytical point of view. We take a look at Martin's inspirations, at the independent media that has grown organically from YouTubers and from the audience. We pick apart the different arcs, the way that the story deals with magic, the different ways that you can read and watch the same story. All of this in one book. Once you read the whole thing, you get an all-encompassing look about the story to better appreciate it, to lengthen the Game of Thrones experience as the show is winding down. And the link is in the description. You can get it on ebook. You can get it as an audiobook. Boom. And you can get it as a print book. It is already a number one bestseller in Amazon in several categories. It's a great read. I also edited this book, so I read all the chapters beforehand, and they are fun to read. They're also funny, insightful. You're gonna have a great time reading the whole thing. Hopefully you like my chapter two about the historical and political side and the chapter that I collaborated with Noga on, on the psychoanalytical side. So check out the links in the description. Get your The Thrones Effect book today.